Hebrews 13, 20 and 21. We'll read now. Amen. Hebrews 13, 20 and 21. May we read it. Now, the, it's on the monitor and there are Bibles under your seats. So, everybody who can is invited to read along. Amen. Amen. May we read. Now, the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, that is a loaded two verses of scripture. Amen. And we will not unpack it all, but I will chip off a piece. Amen. For today. Amen. Ain't no sense in trying to unpack it all. Because if we did that. You'd forget the beginning by the time we get to the end. Amen. So we're going to chip a piece as we seek to uh, speak from the and Keep your Bibles handy because we're going to notice a couple other passages in the next couple few minutes. Uh, from this subject, our subject today is power to influence. Power to influence. Power to influence. <sighs> Let's understand that uh, when we when the words and the subject the, the words are used to power to influence uh, to influence something doesn't mean just a temporary uh, shift uh, that may be purely emotional or it may be purely uh, just for a moment. Uh, to influence something means to, uh, to Present something and infuse something in the atmosphere that changes the atmosphere. It changes the atmosphere. Amen? There are all kinds of people make probably billions of dollars a year selling different kinds of stuff to uh, deodorize buildings and spaces. And what they're trying to do is infuse something that will change the atmosphere. Amen? Amen? Infuse something that will cause a shift in the atmosphere. Infuse something that causes those who experience the atmosphere to experience something substantively different. Amen? Are, are we communicating? Yeah whether it be on a personal hygiene level or, or creating some uh, uh, odor that covers a, a, a massive sp space, the intent is to influence 
the atmosphere. Amen. Amen. So soap influences. Mouthwash influences. Lotion can influence. As they used to say on, say on the Beverly Hillbillies, smell them. <laughs> Perfume and colognes influence. Amen. So we are talking about the power to influence. Amen. This is one major way of influencing the atmosphere. How does it begin? What is the, the, the beginning point for the Christian of, of recognizing and receiving and, and uh, using this power to influence? The beginning point comes in recognizing that Jesus won the victory through the shedding of his blood. That is rudimentary, it is primary, and for some of us it may even seem a bit too elementary for us to entertain. But if we lose fact, if we lose view of that reality, then we are building on sinking sand. We must always remember everything we access, we access because of the shed blood of Jesus. Are, are we communicating? <clears throat> yes, yes, yes. This is, this is, that's a critical, pivotal kind of point. It is the shed blood of Jesus. Amen. You don't have to necessarily turn there, but in ref I'll reference Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. Amen. That talks about us being, you know, reconciled through this blood. Amen. For first century Christians, amen, to speak of Jesus' blood was to speak of redemption. Amen. That means the price was paid for my freedom. And it was to speak of forgiveness. That is to have my sins pardoned. The price was paid and, and, and my sins are pardoned. Amen. For the first century Christian, when they talked of, of Jesus, when they spoke of Jesus' blood, that was first and foremost in their minds. Amen. And, and the reason that was, uh, and those are two, two pivotal points of truth. But the reason the, the, their, the maturity in their understanding of it didn't go any further was because first century Christians expected to be raptured during their lifetime. They expected what's called the parousia, the, the, the coming back of Jesus. They expected that to happen while they yet lived. They never, that's why at some point Paul had to deal with people who say, started asking, well, what happened to the people who died? What's going to happen to them? And, and so teaching had to be done about death and about the resurrection because those immediate first century Christians expected Jesus to come back during their lifetime. What they didn't know what we don't know is exactly when he coming back. Now what we do know is that he is coming. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Mount of Transfiguration when they were, those fellows were asked, why y'all standing here looking? That same Jesus who went away 
is coming back. He's coming back, man. Ain't no doubt about it. He come, we just don't know. But he's coming back. And, and for all of us who fall asleep, we don't fall asleep in no hope. Because the Bible says that when he comes to the middle of the air, and when the trump of God sounds, the Bible says he will bring the spirits of the departed with him. And, and in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, those spirits are going to find those bodies that went down mortal. And before those who may be walking on the earth get raptured, people are going to be bursting forth out of the grave. Glory to God. That's what the word says. Just don't know. We've got to live so that whether it happens now during our lifetime or after we've gone, we are in a state of readiness. Ready to say, oh, come now and even come now, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. We can talk, you don't have to reference this either, but first Peter 1 18 and 19 talks about redemption. Amen. Amen. Amen, but here's what we do want to, here's another passage we do want to look at. Romans chapter 5, verses 8, 9, and 10. Romans 5, 8, 9, and 10. Hello. Romans 5. Eight, nine, and ten. Well, let's read eleven too. We gotta finish that paragraph. Uh, eight through eleven. Let's read. But God commendeth His love toward us, in that. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Hallelujah. Verse 10 says, For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Oh, man. Now, 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 there's a fine line right here. Please reconcile. According to what this word is saying, you, you, you can be reconciled to him. You can, you can receive, we can receive Jesus as our personal savior. But that doesn't excuse us from the episodes in life after we have received him when we still need to be saved. I'm saved, but I need to be in this situation, in this circumstance, in this prevailing thing. There's something going on from which I need to be. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, so, 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 so please be aware. Don't doubt your salvation. When things come up in your life to rattle your cage, or things come up to make you upset, or things come up and you feel unqualified, or things come up and the devil uses them to make you feel like God ain't here, don't let, don't believe that. If you are indeed saved, you are saved. But being saved does not excuse us. It does not dismiss those things that Satan will hurl at us from which we need to be saved. Does that make sense? 
that's, we got to understand that point. And if you don't, ain't no shame. Just say it, and I'll use my broken English to say it another way. You understand? Y'all understand out there in TV land, on your computer, you understand? Make sure you do now. Because when your mouth says you understand, that goes on record. Amen. When we were enemies, we were reconciled by his death. Now, after we reconcile, being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Saved from what? Saved to what? Ah, glad you asked. The Holy Spirit. That verse is pivotal. The Holy Spirit allows us to activate. Somebody say activate. The Holy Spirit allows us to activate. And the Holy Spirit allows us to unleash. Somebody say unleash. The power the powers of heaven to influence our situations. Is this thing making sense, y'all? The Holy Spirit, that's why we need to know him and walk in him and be saturated in him. Amen. So that when, when situations come up, we don't respond out of our flesh. The temptation is to respond out of your flesh. Somebody walk up and hit you. Your temptation is to what? Somebody shoot at you. The temptation, if you got a gun, is to. But it is the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. It is the Holy Spirit. And when, when your flesh gets that response out of your belly and it's already up in your mouth, it's the Holy Spirit who lock your mouth and said, no, I ain't going to let you say that because if I let you say that, it's going to do you more harm than what good is going to do you. So what I need you to do is stand still. I need you to <laughs> hold your peace. And I need you to just stay right there and watch me work this thing out. Because if you open your mouth, you're going to make a bad situation worse. I know we're in, a, we're in a season where folks say, well, I just got to say it. There's just something on my chest. Let me tell you, Saint, you ain't got to say it. You ain't got to say it. It is the Holy Spirit who informs us. Yeah, look, 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 I, I've got, he says, what you need. Now, I know you're saved. I know you're reconciled. And I know you even walk in me. But what you're failing to remember at the moment is that I got an arsenal. <laughs> And if you trust me, and if you follow my lead, I'll tell you how to drop something on the situation. Oh, man. Man, 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 man. Ah, man. Try to put it in some historical context. The bomb that ended World War II was thought about in 1914, before World War I, or at the beginning of World War I, a fellow named H.G. Wells conceived of a bomb that you could just drop, and it would just keep on 
it was 30 years before it came into being. But some things happened. Uh, 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 the United States of America, amen, amen, had to face some realities. They were fighting some people who had already decided we're going to fight till all are dead. <laughs> they weren't fighting to see who the strongest. They were ready to die down to the man for what they believed in. Are we communicating? Amen. Amen. And, and, and we had already come to realize, we had already come to realize, amen, from some other uh, places where, um, where, 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 where the, the United States had engaged Japan, that Japan wasn't playing. We weren't going to just go slap them a couple times and come back home. That was not going to work. Amen. We had already realized at Iwo Jima, we had already realized at Okinawa that these people in it to win it. And because the death toll continued, a critical decision had to be made. We need a weapon that is so catastrophic that it stops our enemies in their tracks. Now, I ain't trying to politicize it. I ain't trying to talk about how right or wrong it was. I'm just talking about why the decision was made. We are fighting an enemy that is relentless. And if we cut this group down, another group going to come. And the bad thing is, while we cutting them down, they cutting us down too. So how do we minimize the loss of life on our side? We got to do something. We got to think out the box. And so the decision was made in 1945. We dropping the A-bomb. Amen. On what? Y'all know. Come on now. We're going to drop the A-bomb. Amen. On Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Right? We're going to drop them. And, and a few days apart, maybe three days apart, they dropped them. Japan said, okay. Because see, y'all, we crazy, but y'all evidently off the meter crazy. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Now let me take that and bring it back up in here. Baby, sometimes you will face some stuff that'll go that ain't going to. If you go tit for tat, it'll keep coming back. It'll wear you down. It'll steal your joy. It'll dull your testimony. Glory to God. But you got to know that the Holy Ghost got something in his arsenal. And if you, <laughs> I already told you now, he gave you permission, amen, to, 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 to not just uh, um, uh, make sure it's present, but he gave you the power to unleash it. Glory to God. What I'm trying to say in my broken down way is you got your own spiritual A-bomb. The devil can mess with you for a while and he can slap you around for a while and you hit him and he backs up a little bit. And then he come and slap you and you back up a little bit. And then you come and hit him and he back up a little bit. And then he come and hit you and you back up. Glory to God. But when you get tired of getting knocked around, when you get tired of getting treated like you ain't got nothing, when the enemy starts thinking he can do you any kind of way, glory to God, the Holy Ghost gives us something that we can drop on the enemy that'll make it real. I can't fool with that one. I better leave that 
one alone because she crazy. I better leave him alone because he ain't got good sense. What is that e-bomb? Plead the blood. Plead the blood. Plead the blood of Jesus. Plead the blood over my family, over my home, over my health, over my mental stability. Plead the blood. It sounds old timey, but it works. That's your e-bomb. That's the only reason some of us ain't lost it. That's the only reason some of us ain't crazy right now. That's the only reason some of us ain't killed nobody. Because the Holy Ghost said, unleash it. Unleash it. Let it go. Throw out the blood. Throw out the blood. Throw out the blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I see. You can activate it. Hallelujah. The A bomb was thought of in 14. 1 to 45. That it was dropped. I'm telling you, since you got saved, since you started walking in the Holy Ghost, you had access to it. But maybe you didn't know you had it. Maybe you didn't know when to use it. Maybe because of spiritual maturity, you'd have dropped the A-bomb when you didn't need an A-bomb. I'm talking about serious stuff. I'm talking about stuff the devil trying to take you out with. I'm talking about stuff he's trying to steal your life with. I'm talking about stuff he's trying to make you question whether you're saying about. Glory to God. Time for your A-bomb. Activate it. Activate it. Activate it. Pull it out and unleash it. Walk around from corner to corner, from pole to pole. I plead the blood in your children's room. I plead the blood over your vehicle. I plead the blood in your sickness. I plead the blood in your mental situation. I plead the blood. I'm basically done. You see, hallelujah, because the first century Christians expected Jesus to come while they need, lived. Amen. They didn't endure some of the hell that succeeding centuries have had to face. What the devil did, because time he thought he had time, so he kept coming up with new devices, new tricks, new traps. Glory to God. And you think you get used to one thing, and that joke will come at you with something else. Yeah, and you think you got over this situation, and all of a sudden he come puking out another situation. Amen. Let me tell you something. Satan is not your friend. That's why you got to stay away from the devices of Satan. Stay away, stay away. You don't need nobody to read your palm. You need no, no tarot cards read over you. You don't need to read your horoscope. What's wrong with you? Your, no stars control your destiny. What's wrong with you? Your destiny is in the hands of the Lord. So when Satan thinks the stars have lined up against you, the Lord will tell you, drop the A-bomb. Because I need to show him that even when he plans and strategizes against you, I got the last word. <sighs> so those first century Christians didn't have to mature into understanding 
the power of the blood. Amen. They, they understood it as far as redemption. They understood it as far as, as uh, uh, forgiveness. Amen. But they didn't necessarily realize that the blood can cleanse messy situations. They, they didn't realize that the blood, hallelujah, uh, can give you power over the devil. Somebody say power. Over the devil. Come on, say that again. The blood gives us power over the devil. 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 Now say it one more time and say it robustly. The blood of Jesus gives us power over the devil. There are some people who are going to come out of the tribulation. They're going to be 144,000 that are sealed from, from uh, Israel, Jews. But here's what they testify in Revelation 12 and 11. They said, and they overcame him. And they overcame him. They're they going to learn in the tribulation what we already know. See, they don't believe in Jesus now. They don't believe in the blood of Jesus right now. But in the tribulation, they're going to come to know what me and you supposed to know already. Oh, man. Let me go on and finish with you. And they, oh, this is Revelation 12 and uh, and, and 11. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. Amen. And they overcame him by the the what? The blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb. That means that there are at least 144,000 who are going to come through the tribulation and they're going to say nothing but the blood. Oh, Lord, they were trying to kill us off, but nothing but the blood. They were trying to wipe us out, but nothing but the blood. They were trying to exterminate us, but nothing but the blood. We thought we were a hopeless case, but nothing but the blood. And here we are before the rapture. We are here before the tribulation. And you and I already got the spiritual information. Amen. We can make it. We can overcome. But it's by the blood. You... I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop, but let me, just, let me do this one last little point. Some of y'all are saying, well, Pastor, that's good for you. Because, see, you know how to say them things. But I don't know how to say them things like you say them things. I ain't that proficient in saying them things. So, so what I'm supposed to do when I mean, the devil fighting me, Pastor, see, you can't preach to just them few people. You know all them people who think they know everything. Pastor, you can't just preach to suit them. You got to preach to suit all of I sure am. All you got to do is say, I plead the blood. That's all you got. I plead the blood. Look at that situation. Point to that situation. I plead the blood. You need to let the devil know. I plead the blood. I'm coming against you, against every tactic, against every trick, against everything you try. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. It's hellish right now, but I'm pleading the blood. My children acting like I didn't raise them right, but I plead the blood. The doctor talking about I'm going to die in three months, but I plead the blood. The, the, the mental health people saying I'm going crazy, but I plead the blood. I plead the blood. Somebody say your marriage ain't going to work, but I plead the blood. I plead the blood against everything the devil trying to block. Everything he trying to destroy.
destroy everything he's trying to tear down. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. Now, having done that little teaching point, reveal to me that there's one more teaching point I got to make. Because some of us, I perceive, think that this is a bit too earthy for me. Look, Pastor, I need something other than I plead the blood. Pastor, I'm just beyond that, Pastor. I don't, that, that sounds like something for the other people. But I'm here to tell you, this ain't got nothing to do with how much we know. This ain't got nothing to do with social status in life. This ain't got nothing to do with how many letters behind our name. This ain't got nothing to do with annual income, baby. Whether you the judge sitting on the bench or the janitor cl cleaning up the courtroom, everybody can plead the blood. All you got to do is believe that there's power in the blood of Jesus to redeem you, to forgive you, and to address every situation Satan will. I plead the blood. And when we say, in faith, I plead the blood, then the power is unleashed. Somebody say power. Man, that sounds kind of anemic. Somebody help me say, power! The power, the dunamis, the dynam not dynamic, dynamite power of the Holy Ghost. Just like them bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. You got to let the devil know, this one, you will not win. Somebody help me say that, this one, you will not win. This one, you will not win. You beat me up some, you beat me down some. You hurt my family, you did this, you did that, but this one? Mm -mm. Yeah, 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 you, you won some battles, you won some battles. I took a couple of lickings from you. You cut my tail good a couple of times, but this one? You almost convinced me that I couldn't rise again, but this one? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I'm trying to bless you in these last little couple minutes. The devil will try to trick us to think that pleading the blood is just about stopping stuff that he's trying to get on our minds. That's part of it. But pleading the blood is also for shutting out stuff that the devil wants out of our minds. If there's something the enemy's been using to pull you down, to confuse you, you got to think of that thing and say, I plead the blood. I won't get consumed with it anymore. I ain't gonna get depressed about it anymore. I plead the blood over my mind not just what's coming in but what's going out oh man Ooh. Now, I'm done, and the only thing stopping me from putting this mic down 
is because the Lord is just telling me, encourage them to receive their healing today. He just told me, encourage them to receive their healing today. Encourage them to know that they can plead the blood. Encourage them to know that I gave them the authority. I gave them the keys. 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 And according to the word of God, whatsoever things you bind on earth. That's why you, that's why you use the blood. That you plead the blood to bind that thing. Tie it up. Glory to God. Tie it up. Tie it up. In your mind, in your heart. Tie it up. And whatsoever things you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So we loose the spirit of peace. We loose the spirit of victory. We loose the spirit of overcoming. We loose the spirit of wholeness, of completeness. We loose it. Receive your healing. We loose that spirit. 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 We loose, we loose the spirit of more than enough. We loose that spirit. We loose that spirit of power. We loose that spirit of love. We loose that spirit of a sound mind. We release. We We've got power to influence. Now, I still feel a couple of y'all lagging back, but the Holy Ghost just comforted me by letting me know. He said, let him stay right there. That's just what he said in his Gullah accent. Let him stay right there. Let them stay right there. I hope when they decide to call, I'm still listening. Let them stay right there. But for the rest, he said, release that spirit of healing. Release that spirit of overcoming. Glory to God. Don't you let the devil stop you today. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Receive it, receive it. Receive it. What do you do when you receive a gift? You reach your hand out and you receive it. Yes, Lord, even me, even me, with all my troubles, with all my trials, with all my headaches, with all my heartaches, sometimes my fault, sometimes somebody else's fault, but God deliver me, deliver me, deliver me, deliver me, deliver me, deliver me. Oh, we have, through the Holy Ghost, the power to influence. Now, I preached it, but I need you to say it. You think of those one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. How many, how many areas jump up in your mind right offhand? And I'm going to give up 30 seconds or so of preaching time so you can plead the blood. I don't know your situation. Come on. Come on. Plead the blood. Plead the blood. Plead the blood. Plead the blood. You know where you need it. You know where you need it. You know, you know where your Nagasaki is. You know where your Hiroshima is. Plead the blood. Plead the blood.
Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah.
is really a prayer. It's really a prayer. Oh, oh, in the name of Jesus, keep my heart, my heart. Lord, keep my hand, my hand. They keep my emotions, keep my feelings, keep my soul, keep my soul. Lord, I pray. Keep my tongue. I want to speak thy praise. Keep, keep me all, all, all the way. Now while the musicians keep on playing, choir members who are able to, would you just stand? I think many of us stand in the need of prayer today. Many of us stand in the need of prayer. Many of us know that the enemy has been coming against us. He has a subtle, little sneaky ways. He doesn't always la launch a frontal attack. He, he doesn't always come in your face, but he'll chip away by going after things that are close to you. He doesn't always come directly after you. But if he messes with your siblings, he messing with you. If he messes with your mama or daddy, he messing with you. If he messing with your son or daughter, he messing with you. If he messing with your spouse, he messing with you. He doesn't always come directly at you, but he comes at those things that are dear to you. Y'all, by the aid of the Holy Ghost, we got the power to influence today. And I declare, I decree unto you, you shall not leave here and forget what God said to us today. You cannot leave here and go back expecting situations to be as they were. You've already took the, taken the initiative to plead the blood. Now you got to believe that the blood is working. You got to believe that the blood is doing what only the blood can do. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So don't you go back and expect to find things the way they were. The devil may try to delude you. He may try to trick you into thinking that ain't nothing changed, but that's a trick of the devil. He'll use his last puff of air to try to make you think that it's all a lie. You got all excited up in that church today. Ain't nothing changed. I'm still running it, but the devil is a liar. As a matter of fact, the Bible says he's the father of every lie. Glory to God. So when he get through trying to talk to you, or even don't let him talk too long, when he starts to try to tell you, ain't nothing change. You go on and tell him, you lying. Go on and tell him, devil, you lying. You lying. The blood of Jesus is all against you. You just mad. You lying. You lying. Brothers, we got the blood. We got the blood. He ain't just for us here, here in church. You got to use the power of the blood in your individual circumstances day by day by day by day. Plead the blood, my brothers. Plead the blood, my sons. Plead the blood. Plead the blood. Plead the blood. Oh, yeah. If you feel the Lord tugging at you today to be saved, then come on. Join that number that no man can number. When I was little, we used to, 
that back in the days when usher boys used to sing, we used to sing a song that said, come on, join that number that no man could number. Come on, join that number, let's go home. So my invitation is today, come on, join that number that no man can number. Doesn't matter what your record is. Doesn't matter what you've done that you or anybody else has said is wrong or makes you no good. None of that matters. All that matters right now is that you believe that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus the Christ, who gave his life and through the shed blood of Jesus, everybody who believes can have everlasting life. That's all that matters right now. Don't you listen to the devil's lies. Don't let him, don't let him even try to tell you you can't be saved. Yes, you can. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Backslider. You gave your life to Christ. Through a crazy thing, you slipped. Hear Almighty God say, I am married to the backslider. You might have slipped from him, but he never left you. All you got to say is, I want to come back home. You still have your place in his heart. To all the saints who've had to drive the devil out, that's what pleading the blood does. Drive old Satan away. Drop a spiritual A-bomb on him. Plead the blood, drive, drive him away. strength today whatever you're facing the power is in the blood whatever we are facing the power is in the blood whatever the challenges or obstacles the power is in the blood the power is in the blood the power is in the blood Now that we've taken the initiative to plead the blood, you start calling those godly, wholesome things. You speak them into existence. You loose. You loose that son or daughter in the Holy Ghost to become whoever the Lord wants them to be. You trust God with that situation. Power to influence. Amen. It's not a trick. It's not a little magical incantation that Christians have. No, it's not that. That's, that's what the root workers give you. Little this ain't no incantation. This is speaking the life of the Holy Ghost through the Holy Ghost, speaking the life of the blood. The Bible says the life is in the blood, right? Yeah, that's what the Holy Bible says. Life is in the blood. So this is getting, get, using the power of the Holy Ghost to speak the life of the blood into our situations. I thank God for those mothers and fathers who are already sleeping now. Well, their body's sleeping, but they're already with the Lord. But they knew how to plead the blood. We still alive today because them old folk bleed, bleed the blood and pray over you while you're sleeping and slap some oil on you and you don't know how you got greasy. Yeah, I thank God. Thank God. Now believe God, believe God. We, uh, <laughs> yeah. Ah, hallelujah. Part of a song that entitled Christ is the Answer says, and while you you on your knees praying, he sets an angel on the run. 
And by the time you get through praying, the work is already done. Let me just tell you, the work is already done. It's already done. It's already done. The work is already done. The work is already done. The work is already done. So, so what, you, what we need to do is go on and say, wow, now in the Holy Ghost. Don't wait to get home and say, wow. Go on and say, wow, now. You ain't seen it. Just say, oh, Lord, you did that thing. Go on and tell him. You're speaking by faith. You're speaking by faith. God, you did that thing. You did that thing. Go on and tell God, you really, you, you did exceedingly abundantly well on that one. Thank you, Jesus. Don't wait to go home to see if he did it. Start thanking him now because he already addressed the situation. Well, I will pray for those who have given your, life to, your lives to Christ, for those who have come back to rededicate, for those who are thanking the Lord for already moving in situations. Hallelujah. Yeah, God, I thank you. Yeah, yeah, God, I thank you. 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 Anything that the enemy uses to tell you otherwise, you already know that's a lie. Whatever he uses to suggest otherwise, you already know. That ain't God. That ain't God. That ain't God. That ain't God. Let's pray. Oh my God. Oh my God. Ooh, Joe. I got the kneel for this one. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the sweet name of Jesus, in the strong name of Jesus, in the sufficient name of Jesus, oh God, no other name we know, no other name we know, no other name we know, no other name. We God, we can call on anybody else. But God, nobody can, could do us any good but the name of Jesus. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we come, Lord, in the power of the Holy Ghost. We come, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for a chance to humble ourselves before you. Thank you for a chance to acknowledge your goodness. Oh God, not just today, but God, all our lives, you've been good to us. All down through the years, you've been good to us, God. You've blessed us way beyond what we deserve. We thank you today, God. You blessed us when we were right. God, you even blessed us when we weren't right. We thank you today, God. You blessed us when we were obedient. And God, you blessed us when we were disobedient. And we thank you, God. Oh, God, we don't take you for granted. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, move by your power today. Oh, God, thank you for saving the unsaved, God. God, we pray for that soul that's nearest to hell. We pray for the unconcerned. We pray for the ones who said nobody going to tell them what to do. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, God, do what you got to do to rescue them from themselves and from an eternity in hell. God, in the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord, for those who just have heard the truth, 
but refuse to accept the truth. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, oh, cause us to know, Lord, that they've heard it. Whether they've decided to receive it or not, they've heard it, God, in the name of Jesus. Then, God, we pray for those who say that they received it, but, God, they consistently behave as though they don't know the truth in the name of Jesus. Many here have been carrying them, Lord, for years and years and decades and decades. We've been carrying those who claim to know you. But God, in the name of Jesus, God, we release them to your hands now. Oh, God, do what you got to do, Lord. We know we aren't going to always be here to pray for them. We aren't going to always be here to stand in the gap for them, God. They've got to learn to approach you for themselves, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, I pray today. I pray, Lord, that for, for a harvest of souls, God, in the name of Jesus. I pray for a harvest of souls, God, in the name of Jesus. I pray for a harvest of souls, God, in the name of Jesus. From the north, from the south, from the east, from the west. I pray for a harvest of souls, God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, I pray for a harvest in the backsliders. God, call them, bring them in, God, in the name of Jesus. May, see the, may they see your light and follow your light back home, God, in the name of Jesus. Even the backsliders who never left home, but in their hearts they left you, God. Oh, God, I pray, Lord, for a harvest among those we call backsliders today, God, in the name of Jesus. Then I pray for renewal. I pray, Lord, I pray for your power, Lord to just move among the saints today in the name of Jesus I thank you Lord I thank you Lord for banishing that spirit of confusion that spirit of depression God in the name of Jesus that spirit of worry and doubt God in the name of Jesus Lord I thank you for loosing a spirit of praise God a spirit of victory a spirit of overcoming God in the name of Jesus oh God thank you God thank you for teaching us what we ought to think God God, you said keep these things on your mind, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, I thank you today. I thank you for the power of the blood of Jesus. Power to redeem us, power to redeem us, God. Power to forgive us, God. But power, Lord, to also give us the, 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 the authority to confront Satan, Lord, when he comes against us, God, in the name of Jesus. Power to influence the atmosphere, God. Power to, to cause shifts to come, God, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for it today, God. I thank you for it today, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Oh, God, oh, God, may we, may we, may we realize that power is real when the benediction is given. That power is real when we leave this house. That power is real when the worship is over, God. It's just as real then as it is now, God, in the name of Jesus. We're trusting you today, God. We're trusting you to cause us to, to walk on the victory side, God. In every matter, God. Every matter, Lord. The sickness that, that, us, that, that assails our bodies, God. Lord, the confusion that comes against our minds. Lord, you're just right for it, God. We plead the blood. The attacks on homes. We plead the blood. The, 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 the thief who comes to rob us of peace. We plead the blood. In the name of Jesus, that generator of destruction, we plead the blood. God, I pray for the saints right now to submit their will to yours, to listen to your voice. We've said what we want to say. We've said how we feel about it. But God, we need the power of the blood. We need the power of the blood. God, I pray for submission today. I pray for submission today. I pray for submission today. Lord, the healing can't be completed until we submit, God. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Have your way now. Have your way now. Thank you. Thank you, God, that we're going back to change situations. Thank you, God. The work is already done. Thank you, God. The victory is already won. Thank you, God. The situation is already in your hands. Thank you, God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for teaching us, for stirring us, causing us to not just activate but to unleash 
this power to influence with which we have been blessed. Thank you for doing it all well. We pray for the elders among us, the saints who've been toiling a long time. Oh, God, bless them, God. Meet every need for them according to your riches and glory. Lord, we pray for those who are not the elderly elders, but the elders just the same. God calls us to know what season it is and to line our lives up with the season, God, in the name of Jesus. God, I pray for the little children. I pray for all in between. We want you to be glorified. In Jesus' name, you blood-bought believers say, thank you, Lord. 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 Give God a praise.